Happy Thursday, July 4th. If you're an American citizen, happy 4th of July. My name is Rick Alexander. This is Morning Coffee. You guys can follow me at Rick Alexander underscore and at Lionheart Radio on Instagram if you are interested in connecting with me and talking about the show. And of course, I always appreciate it if you guys share the content, uh, if you're getting something out of it and you think other people that are in your network could actually get something out of it as well. So I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you, and if you'd like to connect, that's the place to do it. That intro music was by Brittany Taylor, and she's at Brittany Taylor on Instagram as well. And she's a nutrition coach, and she's always putting out really cool content and singing, and she's got big things going on. So go check her out as well. So the 4th of July is a very interesting time in the United States, and you're going to hear a lot of people say the word freedom. And the next thing you're going to hear is a lot of people that talk about something that they don't actually understand at all. And so today what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about freedom. So one of the things that I talk about quite a bit in my content is the role that values play in your life. And I teach a whole module on it in the Clarity Academy, uh, which actually, shameless plug, has just launched. And so the Clarity Academy registration is open. So if you're interested in taking the 12-week online course or doing the immersion program, just finding out more about who you are and what you really want out of this life, Hit me up and I'd love to get you into either of those programs. But one of the things that I talk about in that course is this idea that once you establish what your values are, uh, and I'm not going to talk about the importance of values right now because that's such a deep tangent that I feel like just listen to older content and figure out more of how I believe or more of what I believe around value sets and your individual value set. But one of the things that I'm very adamant about is that you understand, one, what your values are, and two, what the cost of your values are, and that you're willing to pay whatever it is that they cost. Now, doing this work, one of the things that I find, because one of my values is freedom, one of the things that I find is freedom comes up for people quite often as a value. The thing to understand, though, about freedom is it's the absolute most expensive value that you could possibly have, because the price of freedom is so damn expensive. And I'm not talking about in a nationalistic sense. I mean, in your life, if you want freedom, then you have to be willing to leave the safety of the shore and the comfort of your house over and over and over. It's kind of like growth in the way that that value is going to demand a lot from you if you really want it. See, because to understand that you have true, true, because to understand that you have true freedom is to not ask anybody's permission for anything. And so a question in your life might be, where do things come up in my own life where I actually do have to ask permission, whether that's a boss or a parent or whatever? The thing to understand if you're an adult is you're an adult and you don't need anybody's permission to do anything. Now, there are caveats to that, of course. But if you truly value freedom, that's one of the things that you should definitely comb through your life and ask yourself, where am I asking permission for things that I could just go do? Like, why would I ask for permission to go live my own life? And of course, the reasons for that are varied, and there's many. But if you're someone that values freedom, then you're someone that needs to get to the bottom of that and figure out uh, where you might be giving some of your freedom away. But then the other thing is the reason that freedom is so unpopular to people, like why the reason people, it's a buzzword, they like to talk about it, but the reason that people don't live up to that value is because you have to have a decently high appetite for risk in order to shoulder the burden of freedom. Freedom is expensive. Freedom will cost you to leave things. Like, for example, here's a really good example. I got out of the military because one of my highest values was freedom, which in itself is a bit of a, is a, bit of a paradoxical choice. But I had to because I understood that if I never bet on myself, that I would, be, that I would spend my life wondering what if. And I, just, and I just cannot get to the end of my life with a bunch of what ifs. And in fact, I would say if you have a lot of what ifs, you're probably not living in that free of a state because what might your life look like if you were to never let another what if go unattended to? Once again, we don't know because you don't do it. Most people don't do it, that is. And so ask yourself, all of those what ifs, ask yourself, what would happen if I actually went and did them? Or just go do them, right? <laughs> Stop asking yourself. Like, 
is that freedom is not about deliberation. Freedom is about action. Freedom is about stepping into the unknown and stepping away from the safety. And again, the reason that, that people don't want to live based on their own value of freedom is, is because if you go out on your own, if you go out on the ledge, if you choose to be free and not ask somebody's permission for something and just go live your life, go confidently in the direction of your dreams, the reason that that is so damn unpopular and people don't do it is because it's the scariest thing imaginable. Because when you are a slave to something, that thing owns you. And there's a, there's a feeling of comfort that takes place when you're under the wing of something else. And that's kind of how I felt in the military. It got to the point where I realized the easiest thing I could do with the rest of my life is just continue to re-enlist, get a paycheck every two weeks, and take the really high re-enlistment bonus. It was like $100,000 for three years. And all I would have to do is betray my own value of freedom. But people don't put it that way. People don't understand that they're betraying their own values when they decide to take the money or to make the move for the benefits or the 401k or the safety or the comfort or whatever. And so you end up with this growing dissonance inside of you because by definition, you become someone that you don't really like that much because you are living outside of your value system, right? So if you value freedom and then you live your life in indentured servitude, then you throw in the fact that you're self-aware, which means you have an ability to assess your own actions. What you find is that you are living like someone that you don't actually like. And so the reason I'm saying this is if you want to be free in this life, if you want the freedom of mobility to figure out your own answers and to have free thought and do the things that you want, you've got to be willing to shoulder the burden of freedom. And that comes with risk. That means when you look around and things aren't how you want them to be, it's nobody's fault but your own. And that can feel like a negative connotation, but I actually don't take it as one because if it's nobody's fault but your own, that means you have full autonomy over your fate. It means something has just taught you what hasn't worked. Another one of my values is failure because failure always teaches you something. And I love teachable moments because I'm always looking to learn more about what I don't know so that I can be better in the future. But valuing risk and valuing failure and valuing growth and all of these things that are very uncomfortable for most people living in the rat race, that's what freedom costs. That's what it means to be actually free, to, to reject this idea that you would ever need permission to do anything you ever wanted to do in this life. That's what freedom is. And then it's looking all of that risk, all of that unknown straight in the face and engaging with whatever dragon presents itself. That's the hero's journey. That's what we're doing with our time here. And you're going to live many hero's journeys throughout your life. But, you know, when you look at the hero's journey, one of the things that happens is the hero, and this is the, the basic archetype behind all myth, mythology and all the stories really that we know, when you look at the hero's journey, the basic archetype, what happens is the hero gets a call to adventure and he always denies it at first. Before he confronts the dragon of chaos, he always denies his own call to adventure because he doesn't want to go on it because it's uncomfortable and it's miserable and it seems scary and it seems like you could die. That's the thing about facing the unknown for the, for the mythical hero. The chance that the dragon eats you always does exist, and so you have to enter things with trepidation. But that doesn't mean you don't enter them. You still go forward. You go forward with the trepidation, and you meet chaos where it's at. And whatever dragon is manifested, that's the one you engage with because that's the one for you. And that, on the other end of that dragon, is where all the treasure is in every mythical story. And so in your own life, whatever it is that's stepping up in front of you, whatever you need is on the other side of that dragon. For me, personally, freedom has meant engaging with the dragon, engaging with the chaos, engaging with the unknown, to stepping into things that, quite frankly, scared the living shit out of me. That is what it means to me to live up to my value of freedom, because freedom is an expensive value. And so if it's one that you have, you should ask yourself seriously, do I truly have this? Am I willing to shoulder this burden? Am I willing to reject a life of indentured servitude so that I can actually have the mobility to go find my own dragon and meet life on its own terms? That's a difficult thing to wade through. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think that one is better than the other. And you've got to come to that understanding as well. Just because one person values freedom and another doesn't, this is your life. You're going to express this in any way that you want to. Have the courage to express it how you actually want to, not how everyone else around you is. And then understand that fundamentally, we're not in an adversarial relationship with anybody. We actually all want the same thing. We're just going to go about it in very different ways. And that's okay too. That's what makes life life. That variety is where all of the best stuff in life is found. Well, that variety and the other side of your dragon. Anyway, just wanted to talk a little bit about freedom, a little bit about values and what yours cost. Ask yourself those questions. 
give yourself that inventory and see if you're actually living in accordance with your own values or if you, by definition, are acting like someone that you don't like very much. It's a good place to find, it's a good place to start correcting for some of this self-love and self-loathing stuff that takes place in our lives. But I could go on forever about this stuff. I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you have an amazing 4th of July in the United States and around the world. I love you guys. We'll talk tomorrow on Morning Coffee. So we live out in our old van, travel all across this land, me and you. And we'll end up hand in hand, somewhere down on the sand, just me and you. Just as free. will ever be just as free free as will ever be Till the city lights dissolve into a country sky, just me and you. Lay underneath the harvest moon, do all the things that lovers do, just me and you. Just as free. will ever be just as free free as will ever be and never be Travel all across this land, me and